Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And I am so excited about our discussion today because I think it's the first time we've ever actually discussed this, but it really is something where it may, it will make your life successful, whether it's professional, whether it's personal. And so with that teaser, I'm going to welcome Ed Frauenheim to our program today. Welcome, Ed. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Deb. Thanks very much. I'm I'm really excited to be here with you. Yeah, we're going to have a great discussion. So let me tell people just a little bit about you, and then we'll dive in. So Ed Frauenheim is an author, speaker, and consultant, exploring how men are called to show up at work, at home, and in the world today. Ed spent six years as director of content at Great Place to Work, the research firm that produces the annual list of Fortune 100 best companies to work for. He has co-authored four books, including A Great Place to Work For and Reinventing Masculinity, The Liberating Power of Compassion and Connection. Ed also has published articles in the outlets, including those little things like Harvard Business Review, Fortune, and USA Today. So again, Ed, welcome to our program. Thanks so much, Deb. Well, you know, I always like at the very start to ask my guests how they got to where they are today, because I think that's so interesting. So tell us a little bit how it is that you decided that this is is what your passion is in life. I love this question. And so I will start by saying I'm where I am today here sitting with you. Uh, because I did not find it easy to be a guy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start off that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I grew up in a very nice, comfortable, safe suburb mm-hmm. of, of Buffalo, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I hit that adolescent age, mm-hmm. uh, about 12 or so, I realized that it was a, str- a struggle for me to fit into these expectations or to, mm-hmm. to meet these expectations of mm-hmm. being like a strong guy, right. a winner, mm-hmm. uh, someone who was, uh, tough emotionally or mm-hmm. stoic. I was skinny. I was sensitive. Mm-hmm. I was often insecure and mm-hmm. did not perform my best in, mm-hmm. in sports contests and in kind of key matches. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I did fine in a lot of ways from the ext- I mean, externally. Mm-hmm. I got to Princeton University, um, went on to have a pretty successful writing career, as you, mm-hmm. as you mentioned. But even in that work realm, in a lot of ways, I didn't measure up. Mm-hmm. You know, I never became a vice president of any place. Mm -hmm. I never got, I haven't had an Mm -hmm. article in the New York times uh, op-ed section, even Mm -hmm. though I have other ones, but those are some things. Those others are pretty good. (laughs) Not bad. Right. But there's Mm -hmm. these standards we hold ourselves Mm -hmm. to. Right. One of them is like, you're supposed to manage people as a guy, Mm -hmm. right? You want to become Mm -hmm. a boss. Right. I've managed one person for one day. Mm -hmm. I may have the smallest management career in history. (laughs) And I don't think it was my fault that she left. I mean, it was just, I got assigned to, Managed just one person in a magazine, mm-hmm. and then I think she'd already had plans to leave. But it it, it, it was telling, you know, that I, it, these mm-hmm. were uh, the pressures that we mm-hmm. often feel as guys to be mm-hmm. that protector, that provider, mm-hmm. that achiever, that conqueror. Mm-hmm. Um, and I often didn't feel like I measured up. Mm-hmm. And so as I reflected on those things in my life, I started writing some essays about these things. Mm-hmm. As I was a father, I've, I've got a wonderful wife and two kids, twenty and, and eighteen. Mm-hmm. Um, and as I was writing about how I, it, it was just a bad fit between mm-hmm. how, how I am as a guy mm-hmm. and, and what these rules are, mm-hmm. if you will, I was realizing that the way that men are called to work today is changing mm-hmm. so that it's not as effective if it ever was effective to be that kind of barking boss, right. mm-hmm. commanding general. You're, mm-hmm. you, today, those traits end up making you look uh, cold, rigid, and isolated. It in gets a world you reported not- to HR. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And, and overall in the way, in the way we're, um, 
we're in this faster, flatter, mm -hmm. I would say fairness focused mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. And in that, in this setting where there's, you know, quicker responses mm -hmm. needed and you have to be emotionally intelligent mm -hmm. and create psychological safety, mm -hmm. that older way of, of, of showing up as a guy, mm -hmm. you know, the little phrase we've come up with is you end up being, you come across as rigid, cold, and isolated when mm -hmm. the world is calling for you to be flexible, warm, warm, and connected. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of put those things together. And then mm -hmm. I found a wonderful writing partner in um, Ed Adams, who's a psychologist mm -hmm. who helped roll out these new guidelines from the mm -hmm. American Psychological Association mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, saying that if, if men were rigidly adhering to those old conventional mm -hmm. standards about how to be a man, they mm -hmm. had unhealthy outcomes. Right. So we all, we put that together into our book that you mentioned, mm -hmm. Reinventing Masculinity, Liberating Power of Compassion and Connection. Mm -hmm. And for the last two years, I, I've been really kind of promoting those ideas, mm -hmm. looking at men at work, especially, mm -hmm. but more generally in life um, right. and helping men to have fuller, richer mm -hmm. lives and helping the people around them to have mm -hmm. fuller, richer lives as well. Right. right. You know, and, and I loved reading your book because it, it definitely made me think um, mm -hmm. because I think a lot of times, especially as women, we do the men have it easy. They're going to get the better jobs. And okay, we know there's glass ceilings. There are certainly all of these things that exist. Um, women are definitely paid less. But I think then what happens is we get this resentment of men because, you know, that's whatever the situation is, you know, and 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 it, yeah. fortunately it is changing. But there is the thing where we are expecting men to be a certain way, especially, and I, and I want to point this out because you pointed this out in your book too, straight men, you know, it, you talk about compassion, you talk about caring. That's okay. If, it, if it's a gentleman who is gay mm -hmm. and we yeah. love that. Right. But for the manly man, you know, the, the yeah. straight man, we, you know, it's like, no. And, and so I was, as I was reading your book, I was thinking, okay, who's the epitome in my mind of what the, what we have kind of expected men to be. And I was thinking mm. John Wayne, now, yes, obviously, yes. I'm giving away my age with that, <laughs> but, you know, that really was the thing, you know, he, mm -hmm. he, he, heaven forbid he shed a tear unless his dog died, <laughs> you know, right, um, right. and, but, you know, he, he went in shooting first, he stomped around a lot. He was this larger than life presence, mm -hmm. which the funny thing is, I think he actually might not have been as big as many people think he is or was, you know, just because, you know, that was kind of his persona. But especially for my generation, that was what we came to expect men to be, Yeah, you know, and 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 those that weren't got those horrible, nasty words associated with them that are just, mm -hmm. you know, words that that should never come out of anybody's mouth. Um, and, you know, and, and so then you, like you were saying, you know, you got in your book, you got beat up as a kid, you were skinny. And, and so, you know, I think many times people looked at that and went, well, you know, because of that, maybe you're not good management material, but mm. it is the opposite of that. You know, the compassion, the caring that makes you a good manager. That's what the data is showing now. Mm -hmm. uh, to, yes, I think you're right. Um, and, and to just to build on what you're saying about John Wayne, I, mm -hmm. I had an interesting opportunity to talk to a group of about 18 men and a mm -hmm. couple of women recently. They're in a, a kind of a retirement mm -hmm. support group, you might say, ah, called a mm -hmm. life transition group. Mm -hmm. And we talked about reinventing masculinity as mm -hmm. you age or as mm -hmm. we age. Mm -hmm. And they, many of them said John Wayne was the model, mm -hmm. to your point. Like right. they had the same perspective. and there was a one man who said the most insightful thing I thought he said, we were given these values of like hard work, you know, go after your goals. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was great, but right. we weren't necessarily equipped for what happens if it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. In other words, there wasn't the ability even just to be self-compassionate. Right. In other words, if you didn't succeed, mm -hmm. you were a loser, mm -hmm. you know, because we've been, we've been steeped in this culture of mm -hmm. men, men compete and they win and they get to right. the top. There's not much room for those uh, who don't get there mm -hmm. or a lot or not much compassion. Those, mm -hmm. They're called those names that we're, we're mm -hmm. not saying. But in today's parlance, it's often like the beta men, mm -hmm. the uh, also rans, mm -hmm. you know, not the alphas. Right. Um, and, and yet it, the, the men who do have traits that are uh, about forgiving themselves, mm -hmm. forgiving others, reaching out, being compassionate, 
gay or straight, mm -hmm. they're the ones that are often the better leaders. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and this is stuff we found in our data at Grip Based to Work. We could talk mm -hmm. about that if you'd like, but but you're right yeah. on in terms of the the, the science on this. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I really did wonder that, you know, the, the fact that you worked at Great Place to Work because, you know, you were researching why the employees said it was a great place to work. And mm -hmm. nobody is going to say, well, I like working for the dude who makes me work 80 hours a week, yells at me, <laughs> you know, all of these, right? You know? yes. <laughs> They're going to say, I like the, you know, I love working for the, the person who lets me have a flexible schedule, understands that, you know, things might not be going right. You know, all of the things, the, the compassion, the caring, all of those things provides, you know, even things like provides childcare at work. You know, those mm -hmm. are all of the things that tie into the great places that work. But, you know, and, and the nice thing is we are transitioning to those, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the yell at you type of places don't really exist anymore, or they do yeah. and they're going away. Right. They're not thriving mm -hmm. as, as mm -hmm. much typically. Mm -hmm. What we found, uh, maybe you saw this in the in the book that we studied at one point, 75,000 mm -hmm. employees and mm -hmm. 10,000 managers. Mm -hmm. And we found what were the what were the characteristics of the most effective mm -hmm. and inclusive leaders. Mm -hmm. And th they were leaders had the highest indicators of innovation. Right. They had the best retention. Mm -hmm. They had the highest productivity indicators. Mm -hmm. And they also had the highest ratings of employee contentment, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. of, of feeling people feeling like it was a great culture. Right. And here's what they were like. They were humble. Mm -hmm. They were great at creating bonds of trust, mm -hmm. kind of like you were just talking about the, the, mm -hmm. the relationships where I can trust you and mm -hmm. you can share with me and, and be real. And they also highlighted the highest purpose of the organization. Mm -hmm. They were they weren't about the immediate quarterly numbers. They weren't getting on your case for mm -hmm. for immediate productivity. They were like, let's mm -hmm. how do we, you know, achieve our mission? Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is a model that's very different from mm -hmm. the image of the old guy that mm -hmm. is kind of just, you know, really like yelling at you as you mm -hmm. put it to to right. kind of, you know. Meet the meet mm -hmm. meet your deadline, meet your quota. Mm -hmm. No in, no interest in any excuses mm -hmm. or, or what what human mm -hmm. problems you might be bringing to the workplace, uh, and that's really, you know that this is the new model where caring mm -hmm. rather than scaring right. is what produces mm -hmm. great results. Right. Yeah, you know, and it, there still has to be things like deadline set and quota. I mean, you know, we're not saying that everybody just mm -hmm. goes. You know, they become flower children. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and and let's be honest, somebody still has to be in charge. Yeah. You know, other. I mean, it's just like a family, you know, if nobody is in charge of the family, well, then the kids do this and the dog does that and, you know, nothing gets done. You have to have that person in charge. But I think one of the biggest things is they're going to be successful if people respect them. And the person who screams and yells and is unreasonable, you know, I might think, hey, you know, he's making good numbers, but I'm not going to respect him. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're speaking to, in another word that we used a great place to work was the, mm -hmm. the word trust. Mm -hmm. There was, there needs to be trust between folks, mm -hmm. including leaders and, and folks on the leader's mm -hmm. team. And that does re include respect. That's mm -hmm. one of the categories under the, right. under the trust banner. Mm -hmm. Um, and what, one of the things that we talked about over time was the idea of having a, a mindset of trust, a trust mm -hmm. mindset where mm -hmm. you, uh, you start from a place of seeing the other person as a glass half full. Mm -hmm. not as someone who's likely to screw up or likely right. to try to get mm -hmm. over on you or try to steal mm -hmm. from the company, mm -hmm. but, but so much of company policy and leadership is assuming the worst of people, right? The best companies, mm -hmm. the best leaders assume the best of people mm -hmm. and people rise to the occasion typically. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and I think, you know, we saw so much of that during the COVID shutdown, you mm -hmm. know, the, the poor micromanagers, I think all of their little heads just went, Boop! <laughs> you know, we don't have them anymore, right? Because, you know, yeah. they, but, but those were the people who also were saying, okay, you're going to work from home and you're yeah. going to do this time to this time. Now, there are some reasons why, you know, you, you, there are certain times, but, you know, if somebody gets their work done at 11 o'clock at night, who's to say that's not when they're going to work? Um, but that, you know, yeah. we also, for the first month or so, heard the stories of the companies who were putting the, the software on computers that were counting keystrokes or actually seeing what somebody did. And then people saying, yeah, I put my three-year-old there and she just banged away, right? That's and, funny. But, but yeah, you know, and, and I had one manager who told me, he said, I don't trust that they're going to get stuff done. And I said, 
Okay. Did you trust them when you were in the same office? And he said, "Eh." I said, okay. (laughs) I said, if you didn't trust them when you were in the same office, then they shouldn't be working for you. I'm sorry. There's, there's Mm -hmm. some issue there. That's a great way to, you know, and, and, and I said, but if you trusted them and they got their work done in the office, then trust them at home. And, and they're probably going to even do a better job. Yeah. There's a lot of evidence that productivity spiked Mm -hmm. soon after the pandemic, Mm -hmm. when people went Mm -hmm. home and they wanted to demonstrate that they, Mm -hmm. you know, could be, we could be uh, (laughs) grownups. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, this is um, a topic that's near and dear to my heart also. Mm -hmm. And it's partly one of the reasons why I left great place to work Mm -hmm. was that I'm, I'm really drawn to this concept of teal organizations. Right. Is that a term you're familiar with? Um, no. And, and it was in your book and, and I actually wrote it down on my notepad here to make sure to, to ask you okay. about a teal organization. Teal organizations are much more democratic and okay. uh, involve shared decision-making than mm-hmm. a traditional organization. Mm-hmm. They kind of take the pyramid of organizational charts mm-hmm. and flatten it into a right. pancake. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see this happening, the, the call for flatter organizations, mm-hmm. because it does allow people to make decisions mm-hmm. in a quicker way, in a more right. responsive way mm-hmm. to what's going on around us. Uh, so there's a there's some awareness of that. Mm-hmm. The Teal philosophy uh, re- also refers to a couple other key I- issues. One is a much more holistic view of people mm-hmm. and the planet, mm-hmm. so that we, we, we try to bring it we're enabling people to bring their whole selves to mm-hmm. work, including even their spiritual or, or intuitive right. mm-hmm. senses, mm-hmm. not a purely rational, mm-hmm. emotionless um, version of, of human mm-hmm. beings. And the last one is that there's an evolving sense of purpose that mm-hmm. uh, the, the organization not only is purpose driven, but mm-hmm. is kind of sensing what is the calling of the mm-hmm. organization over time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and these organizations were, kind of named as Teal by a, f- a former McKinsey author by the name of Frederick Laloux. He wrote a book called Reinventing Organizations. Mm. That's partly why we named our book Reinventing Masculinity, because mm-hmm. we're very aligned mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's Teal represents a consciousness level. It's part of a color scheme going right. from like red, amber, mm-hmm. orange to right. green to Teal. Red is danger, danger. You know, things red like is, that. yes. Mm-hmm. It's more mm-hmm. like the notion that human beings at some point in our history and also individually in our lives were combative say mm-hmm. where it's like warring clans mm-hmm. the orange level is a more of a traditional capitalist let's mm-hmm. uh, focus on achievement mm-hmm. and have a, a notion of a meritocracy mm-hmm. but doesn't necessarily acknowledge our fullness as mm-hmm. human beings the, this teal level uh the d the green level is you could say is roughly akin to the dei movement to, to mm-hmm. try to invo- involve right. more voices mm-hmm. and yet the, much of the dei movement doesn't really make space or doesn't really change that pyramid Right, you know, they're trying to bring more people of mm-hmm. color or women to the mm-hmm. to the top, but there's still few leaders. Mm-hmm. What the teal organizations do, in part, is say mm-hmm. we can have a leaderful organization. Mm-hmm. We can give leadership power to to many more people right. as long as we trust them and there's mm-hmm. communication. Mm-hmm. It's not a everybody does whatever they want, mm-hmm. right? But there is a lot of there's some examples that are really mm-hmm. promising of these kinds of organizations thriving and the people in, mm-hmm. within them thriving as well. Mm-hmm. You know, and we we talk about the word empowerment a lot, um, you know, and and I remember I interviewed a gentleman and it's been quite a few years ago where he told me, he said the greatest thing that ever happened to him in business, and he, he founded his own business, big company. Um, and he said the best thing for him was when he went on vacation and didn't worry about anything. Because he knew that he had the right people in place who could make the decisions, who knew, you know, that that if the decision was wrong, that was okay. We were going to fix it. You know, all of these various things. And he said, that really should be everybody's goal to know I can go on vacation and the place doesn't fall apart without me. I love that. Deb. And that to me is real empowerment. Mm -hmm. Uh, But because I see a lot of fake empowerment, right? Where Mm -hmm. where, where people are told, yes, do do your thing. Mm -hmm. We want you to make more decisions. Mm -hmm. And yet, as soon as they make a mistake, yeah, they're chewed out. (laughs) They might lose their job or they might get penalized. Right. Um, They're, you know, empowerment for real is Mm -hmm. about turning the lens, you know, into Mm -hmm. about learning. Right. It has to come Mm -hmm. with the sense of like, we're experimenting. Mm-hmm. We are, you know, if, if, yes, there are good exceptions where people mm-hmm. go, go way off the rails. Mm-hmm. You may have to manage them out, fire mm-hmm. them. 
Um, but there's uh, a lot of st micromanagement that still happens under mm -hmm. the banner of empowerment, I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I work with a client right now that I think is, is doing some real empowerment mm -hmm. to your point, like your, your executive, mm -hmm. they are really inspiring to me because they, they're a, they're a, a finance company and they just recently decided to change their call center script mm. system mm -hmm. for dealing with uh, accounts that are mm -hmm. uh, past due. Mm. And where they used to have these four main things that the, each representative is supposed to mm -hmm. talk about, right. they said, okay, we're going to expand it to give a little more humanity to mm -hmm. the the customer, mm -hmm. and we're also going to trust you, the account representative, to have mm -hmm. a an authentic conversation and figure out what mm -hmm. we should do. Right. Instead and of we're going to send you to collections, you deadbeat. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> and the, and mm -hmm. the collection officer felt like a robot because mm -hmm. they 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 had to stay to this these relatively rigid script. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The customer satisfaction ratings have gone mm -hmm. like crazy high, right. and so have the employee mm -hmm. sen sentiment scores. Mm -hmm. And they're doing roughly okay on the collections performance. Mm -hmm. The little there was a little dip, but mm -hmm. the the future signals are good. Mm -hmm. And maybe they may have been too nice initially, mm -hmm. but now they're kind of mm -hmm. fixing that. Right. And to me, that's it's a great example of what happens when you mm -hmm. actually do distribute authority mm -hmm. more widely. Right. Right. You know, and it was funny. The other thing that I was thinking about as I was reading your book was, you know, the 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 enlightened man. You know when he starts embracing kind of the feminine traits, mm -hmm. that's what seems to be what, what kind of makes this work better because the feminine traits are thought of as the compassion, the caring, the empathy, um, you know, and, and, and as women, so many times we've been told we can't do that. You know, we can't be nice at work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I remember one time I had an employee who had a horrible situation. He came in and he's crying it is not a good situation. I mean, you know, it was um, all sorts of things. And, and people told me you have to fire him. And I said, no, that's not, you know, let's, let's see if we can work with this situation. And I got dinged. My boss was not happy. Well, of course we worked out the situation. Everything worked just fine. Would they ever admit that that would know? Um, but yeah, I mean, they, he, oh, I'm sorry, finish your story. I'm yeah, they, they just, they firmly expected me to be this hard nosed, you're going to do this or else, because that was the masculine form of being mm -hmm. a boss. Mm -hmm. Can I just probe that yes. story a little further? Mm -hmm. Like what was the thing that the person was doing wrong? Was it in part that they were too emotional or that was more um, of a reaction? It, there was some it. mismanagement of funds okay. and, you know, and, and, and it was, it was not deliberate. It was not fraud. It was a mistake. Mm -hmm. and you know and and it was and and we we got it fixed i mean there was there was you know and and but yeah the the accounting people were the you have to fire him you know and and i was like no you know he's he's a good employee who mm -hmm. has made a mistake let's see if we can fix this now you know did we tell him if you don't fix it you will go yes <laughs> but right, we gave enough. that mm -hmm. middle ground first i love that yeah, and I think you're right. You know, I, I'm going to own that. You know, what mm -hmm. we're calling for is men to em embrace mm -hmm. typical feminine, what right. I would call energies. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to mm -hmm. call them traits because I think they're human right. traits. Mm -hmm. Because I think and, all men are capable of compassion right. and connection, just as mm -hmm. all women are capable of assertion mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and and um, decisiveness. Mm -hmm. the, these more masculine mm -hmm. uh, energies, if you will, and. It, it's really a call for men to see that they can have a fuller way of being alive. Mm -hmm. Because when mm -hmm. you do embrace mm -hmm. forgiveness, like you described there, Deb, mm -hmm. I bet, I suspect, or it sounds like even there was a a, a tighter bond or a better culture mm -hmm. in your organization if, mm -hmm. if the if the guy appreciated right. the trust you you mm -hmm. showed and then maybe worked hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that mm -hmm. did it have a yes. good ending? Oh yeah, because so. he did know that I could have fired him on the spot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and I mean, this was. 35 years ago, and we're still friends, um, wow. you know, and, and of course, that's that. the other tricky thing with an office environment. Are you friends? You can't be their boss and be their friend. There's ways where you can do that. Um, and yes. and that's, I that has that. been one of the things I think that women get criticized for is, mm. you know, we're trying to be their friend. Um, yeah. But, you know, we're, I'm not saying go drinking with them on Friday, but understand, you know, that, that you can tell them, hey, if you've got a problem, come to me. And they will. Yeah. I, I love that you're, you're pointing that out. Cause I think we have 
we use this excuse it's 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 just business or mm -hmm. it's it's right business is supposed to be separate mm -hmm. from life right. mm -hmm. and i think that that's a real mistake that mm -hmm. uh cuts off life mm -hmm. you know it makes these businesses deadening right. places mm -hmm. you know and that's one of the things we i've seen as i've observed workplaces over 30 mm -hmm. years roughly like when you have a place where you can be in relationship with people mm -hmm. have friendships at work mm -hmm. including potentially your bosses mm -hmm. uh where you can feel uh like you listen to and you have mm -hmm. and you can be if you need to cry mm -hmm. or you have some kind of emotional mm -hmm. challenge it's not something you have to suppress mm -hmm. right. or hide mm -hmm. uh but rather you can be supported mm -hmm. there uh that is how like that is so life giving mm -hmm. and right. you feel uh so much more Ha happy and, and you're you're mm -hmm. you're just when you better. want to go to work right <laughs> there you go and, and the organization benefits mm -hmm. from your yes mm -hmm. you're the the energy you're going to bring mm -hmm. the motivation you're going to bring right and, and that's what we saw in the great places mm -hmm. to work i mean they outperform the stock market dramatically mm -hmm. you know year after year right uh, they outperform in questions of mm -hmm. revenue and operating per mm -hmm. operating performance uh turnover mm -hmm. It just it seems like it's it still hasn't dawned on a lot of leaders to look at what they mm -hmm. do, but but it's right there, it's mm -hmm. sitting there, the data. Right. If, if they're willing to kind mm -hmm. of change those deep seated mm -hmm. attitudes about leadership and what mm -hmm. I would call a hyper masculine work culture mm -hmm. that right. we've accepted, mm -hmm. like you, you you described it mm -hmm. perfectly, you're not yeah. supposed to be forgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and we've been in environments where you've got that that hyper masculinity. I spent several years as a lobbyist. Now, you know, you politics is one where you now this was, you know, quite a while ago, but politics, I think, is one of those areas where we kind of have the expectation of, you know, that the, the manly man, you know, and and all of those things, um, you know, and, and I was very fortunate, you know, even because this was long enough ago, I never had anybody do anything inappropriate. Now I know there okay. were other people who did. Um, I did have somebody pat me on top of my head one time and I was like, excuse me. <laughs> you know, and, and oh. it was more like it wasn't, you know, he was treating me like I was 12 as opposed to, you know, yeah. um, and you know, and, and there were, but there was one time where I was told, you know, that it, it would go further in my meeting with this certain politician if I wore a short skirt. And my response was to wear pants, <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and, but I also had a mother that was very strong and very independent. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that was part of it, but you know, it's, it is nice to see that things are evolving. Not, I, I don't think they're evolving as nearly as fast as we want. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it is so interesting, you know, and you mentioned, you know, companies that are giving back. And, you know, doing philanthropic things and, and all of those. And, you know, I, I, the only news program I watch because news is icky and horrible is CBS Sunday morning, because it's all okay. good stories, feel good stories. Uh -huh. And this last week they interviewed Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, um, okay. who I just think they're cool guys. I mean, they would be the type of people you'd want to go have coffee or a drink with. Right. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about their new production company that they have started where they pay the the techs a, a, a much bigger salary than and and so you know you've because typically in say the film or tv industry you've mm -hmm. got your stars who are making the gazillions of dollars and yeah. then everybody else that has to have a second job because they're not making enough and they said you know yeah. we're wanting to change that and you know and 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 of course immediately they were saying we're talking with Amazon, um, you know, about several different projects we've got, because I think Amazon is one of those companies that recognizes, you know, you, you have to do some of these things. Do they do it enough? No, probably not. But, um, you know, it was, it was one of those things. And, and so, you know, it's, it, they're, they're kind of the opposite of John Wayne, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're the mm -hmm. ones that are inclusive. They're wanting to make everybody feel valued and they're going to be successful. I, I love that story. And I, I know I have a nephew who's in that world doing like the gaffer or the mm -hmm, grip right. or some other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. job. And they often, like you said, they mm -hmm. have to have like, he's also a doorman, you know, right. he's, he's mm -hmm. trying to, he's scrambling mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, make a living, mm -hmm. but he loves the film industry mm -hmm. and the, and the TV mm -hmm. world. Right. So I, I love that, that, that those, mm -hmm. that those fellows are taking that seriously. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, I have a story that I, I learned, in, and I think it's in our book as well, about the CEO of Cisco, mm -hmm. who, I don't know if you you, you saw that, but yes. mm -hmm. Chuck Chuck Robbins, mm -hmm. he really is a hero of mine in mm -hmm. a, a number of ways. And one of them is that 
he similarly wanted to take a, a, mm -hmm. a stand around inequality. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the story is so beautiful, I think, because it came out of a dream he had. Mm -hmm. He dreamt that he was in his Silicon Valley area, the, the mm -hmm. San Jose part of, of California. And in the dream, he went to like a homeless encampment. Mm -hmm. And he saw the face of his father oh. and his pastor Ooh. in the dream, in, mm -hmm. in the homeless encampment. Mm -hmm. And he, he woke up the next day and said, I have to do something mm -hmm. about this. And so he called up a government agent mm -hmm. agency to say, what can we do? What can mm -hmm. Cisco do? What can I do? Mm -hmm. And that like unleashed this whole wave of philanthropic mm -hmm. energy within Cisco. Not only did they mm -hmm. like, I think spend tens of millions of dollars, if I'm got, mm -hmm. got the figure right, for a homelessness mm -hmm. uh, facility, a housing mm -hmm. unit, I believe, housing units. But then it just kind of excited people around the company to say, this is what I'm doing. Here's what I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. a lot of the rank and file folks started mm -hmm. um, amplifying right. the work they were doing in their communities. Mm -hmm. And this to me is, it shows that different kind of masculinity. Like mm -hmm. John Wayne probably wouldn't have taken his, a dream like that as seriously. I, I don't know. Maybe no. he, would. he would have but, thought, uh, well, but, that but, was dumb. <laughs> but you're probably just kind of trusting his soul, mm -hmm. right? you know, his, his psyche mm -hmm. to, to, to his intuition, mm -hmm. To, to pursue what is right. Mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing more and more of that, especially in a lot of younger men. Mm -hmm. they're, they're willing to sort of like- Those darn purpose. millennials. <laughs> exactly. We, 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 I, there's a lot of criticism of millennials and mm -hmm. saying they're- you know, they're But too, we raise them. <laughs> we raise we them. Raise exactly. them we raise them to have, have a say values. in things. We raise them to care about mm -hmm. the planet, say. Mm -hmm. and, and then we are surprised when they don't want to work in crappy workplaces, mm -hmm. you know, or, or they want to have- they want to they have want that companies elusive to to work-life the, the climate balance. crisis in the work-life balance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So one in your book, um, one of the things, and, and I, I was very interested in this, you talked about, you know, one of the, the cultures where we think of the manly man, you know, the brute force, mm -hmm. all of those various things. And that's sports. Mm -hmm. And, now I'm yes I like professional sports but I'm a much more college sports fan. Okay. Um but it it's you know it's one of those things where we don't think about that. I mean you know we we know that really you know it's it is about teamwork and and all of those things but we don't have the athletes anymore or who completely put themselves above the team. Um and when we do they don't last. Yeah. So talk to I love the example of Tom Brady because it surprised me. Right. It surprised mm -hmm. me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to admit Deb, that I, there was a lot of antagonism I've carried in my heart toward Tom Brady because I was, I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. Uh, oh yeah. And mm -hmm. he was just destroying the Buffalo oh, Bills for yeah. years, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, when I, when I learned more about the success of him and, and, and the teams he had, especially mm -hmm. in New England, I was impressed by his humility. To, mm -hmm. to your point. And, mm -hmm. and you're probably referring to this thing he says to every new player, like, hi, I'm Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. He doesn't assume that people are going to come and genuflect to him, even though he mm -hmm. might be the greatest of all mm -hmm. time as a football player. Mm -hmm. He is humbly saying hello, mm -hmm. putting himself on the level of the, mm -hmm. of his new teammate mm -hmm. who may not even make the team. But right. the, and then when he, uh, I don't know if this got in the book, but when, you know, one of the Super Bowls where they won, mm -hmm. he just was about expressing love for every mm -hmm. all of the people around him, right. including the opposition, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, hugging right. these guys. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, obviously he's in a good mood, mm -hmm. but rather than saying like "I did it," look, mm -hmm. you guys suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's more like losers, losers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for for the moment, mm -hmm. and and you know, sharing the celebration as mm -hmm. opposed to hoarding it. Right. Right. You know, and, and it's funny because as we're recording this, March Madness is is going on, mm -hmm. and my team. Huh, is out now. My my women are still in, so yay. Um, but which team is that? Which uh, one? University of Colorado. Um, okay. and so uh, yeah, so you know, the, yay for them. So much fun. Um, but it's always interesting after the game, the the lines. You know, when they're supposed to go and and you know. This, it's the you know the the sportsmanship line, and mm -hmm. and they're supposed to you know the coaches lead it, and they're supposed to shake hands and you know good job and and all of that stuff, and of course the media are right there and ready to pounce on any of the times when somebody isn't showing good sportsmanship, um you know and and these are for one thing they're young people you know they're they're all for the most part under the age of about twenty one twenty two, yeah. and 
you know, and, and, and so of course they're looking to their coaches. So, you know, did the coach, you know, were they gracious in winning and defeat Mm -hmm. all of those things, but you know, it's, I think that's one of those things that it, it really shows their personality because these are high stakes game. These are, you know, just like the Super Bowl, And when they are Mm -hmm. able to go through and still say, good job, and not just good job, good job, good job, good job, yeah. right? And we see that, yes. right? But when they stop and and you see that there's a positive interaction as opposed to, you know, hey, that was a really nasty foul or, you know, things like that. Um, you know, and 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 it's it's that way in work too. You know, mm-hmm. somebody else gets the job, gets the contract, gets the promotion. Why can't we be happy for them? And then learn yeah. so that maybe the next time we're the one that get it. Yeah, great, great question and and uh, an observation. I think that one of the things that we're developing, it's evolving, is is a sense of abundance mm-hmm. as opposed to scarcity, right? Because I think the reason why we often can't be happy for the other person is we feel mm-hmm. like, oh no, that's the last, that's it. That, that right. there's only yeah. one of those things. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, there's a yeah, there's there is only that. one Super Bowl winner. There is and only there's that, one. That pyramid yeah. we talked mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. and we have set up our society in mm-hmm. a very competitive way mm-hmm. it's so competitive i think it's like the water we swim in mm-hmm. hard to even notice it mm-hmm. um but i think there is growing a appreciation that like the better way to handle you know sports and other mm-hmm. territories is to uh have grace have graciousness mm-hmm. to right. just focus on what we can mm-hmm. control have a long view mm-hmm. um this is what you see with like the, the steph curry's is one of my mm-hmm. one of my heroes at in the war golden state warriors is mm-hmm. He he focuses on doing his best preparation mm-hmm. and doing his best mm-hmm. out there in, in the game, but he's not like I don't think he's out there promising championships. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm I'm gonna play my best. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give a, a mm-hmm. I think we have a decent chance to mm-hmm. win. If we don't win, I want to just feel right. like I tried hard. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and it's worked out pretty well. Mm-hmm. Right. This is, you know, mm-hmm. the older the 80s generation, mm-hmm. and when you know, when you had like one of my other heroes, Patrick Ewing, would, would be mm-hmm. promising championships. Right. It's kind of like that tough guy thing you would have mm-hmm. to do to like say, I'm better than you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it did work out for mm-hmm. him, you know, right. sad, sad to say. Right. So I, I think there's this evolving sense mm-hmm. that we got to look a little bit uh, to a sense of you know, there's enough mm-hmm. for everybody. If, if right. we t- take our time and, and mm-hmm. spread out mm-hmm. the riches, uh, mm-hmm. at, least I, at least I'm hopeful that that is where we're, right. we're heading. Yeah. You know, and I will admit I think you still need winners. I think you still need to keep score. Um, you know, I always get a kick out of the people who, you know, say, oh, at my son's soccer game, we never keep score. The kids kept score. <laughs> they knew. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and so I think you can have the winner, but you can have the gracious winner. Um, you know, because part of that is the goal that you're getting to. You know, you want to win the U.S. Open. You want to you know, be the best salesman, you know, whatever, but, you know, to, to be gracious about it, um, you know, mm-hmm. and, and maybe not everybody does need a participation trophy that goes in a drawer that nobody cares about, um, you know, and, and, uh, but, but yeah, it's, so there's, I, I think, you know, we kind of went a little overboard there for a while and now we're kind of coming back and saying, okay, you know, yeah, we can have winners and losers, but how are we going to act in that process? I, I would like to add that I think we could have more games that are non-zero sum. Mm-hmm. In other words, more activities where there aren't right. winners and losers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that where people are finding satisfaction and meaning through progress, right. say, mm-hmm. or through uh, uh, and 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 us recognizing that these are valuable mm-hmm. parts of life. Right. I, I think of say the martial arts and mm-hmm. the way you can be progressing up a, a mm-hmm. chain of of expertise. Mm-hmm or in other kinds of skills mm-hmm. where we learn. Um, and I think it's, you see this kind of rebellion of a lot of kids mm-hmm. who are saying, I don't want the ball sports. Mm-hmm. I'm and my, my son is among those. He played soccer for a long time. He mm-hmm. actually scored a championship goal in fifth grade. Right. Which mm-hmm. I was super excited about mm-hmm. it. He was less excited than I was, mm-hmm. um, but he's gravitated toward uh, surfing mm-hmm. and, and skateboarding mm-hmm. and, right. and well, skiing too. Mm-hmm. Some of so very much an individual achievement. Their individual achievement mm-hmm. and they're often in, in sort of social context mm-hmm. too. Like you go mm-hmm. skateboarding with your buddies or you mm-hmm. surf with your buddies, right. but it isn't about besting anybody mm-hmm. to feel good about yourself. Right. And that's a, that's, I think a difference that mm-hmm. uh, going back to those masculine mm-hmm. feminine things, I think there's, we've 
had an overly competitive, mm -hmm. I would argue, societal focus mm -hmm. that we, I would like to see us bring into more balance, which mm -hmm. is not to say we have to get rid of all competition right. to your point, mm -hmm. but I think we could elevate mm -hmm. uh, activities that are mm -hmm. collaborative right. and creative mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I love it when we do things um, like in, in basketball, they recognize the sixth man for their mm -hmm. contributions because they're not the starter. They're the people who come in and, and, you know, fill in the bench, you know, all of those various things. And, and I love it when they do that because those are often the, the true foundation mm -hmm. of the organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't have those people, we're not going to have anything, um, you know, and, yeah. and maybe it's, you know, the, the practice squad, you know, all of those various things, you know, you, you can't re even if you are truly an individual sport, like say maybe tennis, there's yeah. a whole bunch. You, you're not just hitting a ball against the wall. There right. is somebody on the other your side coaches of the net. and your trainers. Yeah. And yeah. You know, and, and so, you know, how do we recognize those folks? And, you know, I always like it in when they're talking about golf and they're talking about, you know, so-and-so won. And this was how much money he gave his caddy, mm. you know, and, and those things. And you know, yeah, the caddy, and now I don't play golf, but the, the caddy is, is pretty important, yeah. but you know, he could have just as easily, carried his own clubs and, you know, not, not, but, but yeah. And so to recognize, Hey, that support person was how mm -hmm. I got to where I was. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that I think we're getting more and more statistics and data, Deb, that helps us recognize that collective, mm -hmm. the power of the collective right. and, and the importance mm -hmm. of, of the collective. Mm -hmm. uh, I think back in the day, going back 20, 30, 40 mm -hmm. years, we, the statistics were all about, did you get the most points? Mm -hmm. Or did you get the most rebounds? Right. Mm -hmm. And now it's there's all these assists, advanced statistics. Assists maybe mm -hmm. is the most mm -hmm. around the collaboration, mm -hmm. but the advanced statistics suggest what happens when you're on the court. Mm. So all the subtle mm -hmm. things you do over time right. does that actually lead to a benefit for mm -hmm. your team or not? Are you the ball hog? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you the ball hog? So mm -hmm. like a someone like James Harden, who's mm -hmm. pretty ball hoggy, has mm -hmm. has not won a championship, right? right. And and I'm mm -hmm. and I. I don't know what his advanced stats say there, but I think mm -hmm. there are players like Shane Batty, Batty mm -hmm. going back a couple of years, mm -hmm. was finally was acknowledged. He has mm -hmm. incredible power, mm -hmm. even though it doesn't show up in the, right. the tr traditional mm -hmm. stats mm -hmm. because he's doing all that glue guy mm -hmm. stuff. He's he's mm -hmm. helping on defense. Right. He's setting picks. Mm -hmm. He's you know communicating mm -hmm. effectively, and so we're seeing. I think that. There is such power in in community, mm -hmm. in communication, in right. collaboration mm -hmm. that we didn't recognize as much, and I think I think that's helping us shift that mm -hmm. sense of who we are as guys that we're not right. just this, mm -hmm. this. We can feel like we have to be self made men. Mm -hmm. That term I think is getting deconstructed mm -hmm. over time. Right. You know, and and yeah, I mean, it it is. It's so interesting when you see now who the popular players are and though they they are the ones that are you know they're they're the first ones there they're the last ones to leave um you know colorado had a player several years ago his name is evan batty oh my okay. god fan favorite um and big dude i mean he was by far the biggest man physically on the team uh -huh. and the first to cry the first mm. to go help somebody up. Um, I remember one time, uh, and 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 he loved the fans. He would all, you know, they were always having to get back down here because he's off saying hi to the fans and, and all sorts of things. Um, but there was one time where uh, he accidentally injured another player from the other team and injured him pretty badly, knocked mm. him out. Um, wow. And which, you know, is of course extremely concerning. And Evan got, and fortunately, young man was okay. There was okay. no lasting damage, you know, anything like that. But Evan got so emotional that they had to take him completely off the court. And his mom, his mom had to go into the locker room with him. Mm -hmm. Nobody said a bad word about mm -hmm. that. It was Doesn't one of these. A... Yeah. I mean, everybody was like, oh my gosh, can you believe how compassionate that young man was? And, you know, and, and yeah, so times have changed. Right. Cause I, I could imagine. Oh, 10 years ago, it, back in the day of Michael Jordan and Patrick mm -hmm. Ewing, that mm -hmm. would have been like, you're, What's wrong you're, with a, you? you're a wimp for mm -hmm. crying. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're not tough enough to handle right. mm -hmm. when you've, you've caused a little mm -hmm. blood shed mm -hmm. and no mother is going to go into the locker room I know. You know? so mm -hmm. i that is a, that's a sign yes. of the progress they I called for his dead. mommy right 
Yeah. Um, but now it was yeah. like, you know, oh, there she goes. This is great. And it really was, it was, and, and, you know, I listened to all the announcers, you know, all, from, you know, because of course our announcers loved him and, but yeah, I mean the, the, the other announcers were just, this is, is so phenomenal. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it just now, and, and, but he was, he was a teddy bear. I mean, he was just mm-hmm. one of those people that was that teddy bear, but, you know, along with all of this, everybody always said what a great leader he was. And mm. that's this whole thing is, you know, he he embraced that whole thing with, I'm going to be the great teddy bear. I'm going to s- probably score the most points. I want to win just as much as anybody else. But, you know, there's there's all these other aspects to it. Yeah. That's really a great story. I have to learn more about about him. Is is he playing in the pros now? Or um, where, I believe he's he in, Europe, um, in Europe okay. because you know, and 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 of course, his goal is to be back to be coaching mm-hmm. and to be coaching at the University of Colorado. Um, he wants mm-hmm. to come home. Um, you know, and and so people are like, okay, when when <laughs> you know, we love yeah, our yeah. current coach, but um, but yeah, I mean, it just and but he was such a role model for everybody else. And, you know, and, and he was truly, you know, the leader in the locker room, um, you know, and, and part of that was because he, as it, you know, the, as the saying goes, he wore his heart on his sleeve mm-hmm. and we all thought that was great, you know, and he was always voted fan favorite, all those various things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, he just, but yeah, big bear of a, of a man. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've, I've been next to him going, Whoa. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, if we make a segue to some mm-hmm. other areas mm-hmm. where you're seeing unexpected mm-hmm. progress, mm-hmm. I think on this masculinity front, the sports arena is a surprising place mm-hmm. given right. how we were, we were growing mm-hmm. up around that. We were talking about Steph Curry. Well, and, we think and, about gladiators, and, right? I mean, that exactly, kind of is where that all comes back to. Mm-hmm. Well, let, yeah. And let's stay with that for another minute because, mm-hmm. you know, you may have seen this situation where the Buffalo Bills player had a cardiac yes. arrest. Oh yes. Poor. Yeah. Yes. DeMar Hamlin. Mm-hmm. DeMar Hamlin. And mm-hmm. what struck me was, how emotionally expressive mm-hmm. the players were all of them oh they were just crushed. in tears mm-hmm. hugging each other mm-hmm. uh no hold mm-hmm. back n- none mm-hmm. of this sort of like i'm too tough to cry right. mm-hmm. or, or, or anything like mm-hmm. that instead and it wasn't just that one day mm-hmm. you know in the, it was mm-hmm. in the recovery time mm-hmm. and there was a, an amazing quote from one of his teammates um Tr- tredavious white it just mm-hmm. talked about i can't wait to hug that guy again mm-hmm. you know just talking about the affection mm-hmm. and the physical mm-hmm. presence that, that he was missing mm-hmm. uh, of his teammate. Mm-hmm. It, to me, it's another example, kind of like mm-hmm. your, your one with, the, yes. with mm-hmm. uh, Evan of mm-hmm. these guys that are our gladiators are actually mm-hmm. our most advanced mm-hmm. in some ways. Right. Right. And it's a lot of the guys that are posing as tough guys mm-hmm. that have room to grow mm-hmm. and to, I, I hope, and I, I suspect this is happening that mm-hmm. a lot of younger guys are seeing these mm-hmm these role model men. Right. Well, wow. Okay. If, mm-hmm. if the toughest, roughest football players mm-hmm. can be in tears, mm-hmm. can be uh, talking about mm-hmm. just praying and, and, mm-hmm. and wishing the best for their teammate, right. I can do that too. Right. And when the opposing players were the same way, that yeah. was, was what was, was good. Super, super great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I appreciate all the, all the mm-hmm. Cincinnati Bengals in that case. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll tell you, Deb, what, what I've discovered in some of my other projects is that we're seeing this, crack in that hyper-masculine veneer mm-hmm. in other places. And one of them is policing. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I've got a project that uh, I've been working on with some former FBI agents, mm-hmm. with uh, other folks that are involved mm-hmm. in, in masculinity work, you could mm-hmm. say, and, and, and workplace culture, mm-hmm. where we've, we call it Project Compassion. Mm-hmm. And we've done some trainings and workshops where we're trying to elevate compassion in mm-hmm. policing. Mm-hmm. The idea is to first help police feel more compassion for themselves, mm-hmm. express more compassion for their mm-hmm. peers in the department. And then it can mm-hmm. be a, a more community police right. compassionate relationship. Mm-hmm. So it's an inside out model. Mm-hmm. And we have gone into the, the biggest jail in the country, Cooks County jail, which is the where Chicago. Chicago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we saw these uh, prison guards who mm-hmm. started off like this in the mm-hmm. back of the room. You know, what are, what are we this here is stupid. talking about? And How come I have to do this? <laughs> but when we invited them to mm-hmm. share their stories, Deb, they're talking about how mm-hmm. their buddies committed suicide. There, there's high rates of suicide, right. mm-hmm. of alcoholism, mm-hmm. of marital strife mm-hmm. in the law enforcement community mm-hmm. because they have bottled up so much mm-hmm. tension and right. sadness and frustration. Mm-hmm. But when we give them a little opportunity to 
it's okay for you to feel mm -hmm. bad right. and for you to forgive yourself and mm -hmm. to, to open up about mm -hmm. what's, what's challenging. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, new, new, uh, new healthy horizons mm -hmm. emerge. Right. right. You know, and, and of course it's so difficult to be a police officer or a corrections officer because you're never sure is that person going to kill me or kill somebody yeah. else? I mean, you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. so you, you know, they go into it with that mindset, but I think unfortunately what we have seen, you know, recently is I think so many times kind of the, the mob mentality of the one police officer and I'm, I oversteps and that's a very mm -hmm. mild, <laughs> you know? yeah. um, and then the other officers feel like they have to do it too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that's why we see, you know, where one, one starts, you know, at being very aggressive well, then everybody else is very aggressive and then they don't know kind of when to stop, yeah. um, you know, that's and, and, and I'm a firm believer that 99.999% of our officers are wonderful people. And unfortunately, you do have some bad eggs. I mean, you're going to have bad eggs no matter what. But I think, you know, they they get caught up in the I have to behave like this mentality that then, you know, that's that's when some of these these bad situations happen. Yeah, I, I in my work with with some of these officers suggests that most go in for great reasons. Mm -hmm. Like they want to be mm -hmm. they want to serve. They want to yes. do a good job. Mm -hmm. um, but the cultures of a lot of departments mm -hmm. are some of them are. There are challenges of, of right. outright racism, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot. Oh, yes. of, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot that we don't talk about, which is a, a callousness mm -hmm. that starts with the way they treat each other. Mm -hmm. Right. You know where where they're not allowed mm -hmm. to put down their guard. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a kind of um, uh, a, a, a black humor or dark humor that can mm -hmm. can operate within an op within mm -hmm. a, a department, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things. So we are we are trying to. Um, address those, you know, mm -hmm. starting with that individual, mm -hmm. because off, those are where you see the, there is a, a well-being movement of, mm -hmm. for police officers that we're part of, you could mm -hmm. say, where there's a, a recognition. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're, that officers are hurting mm -hmm. as communities are hurting. Right. Mm -hmm. And we need to heal every, everybody. Mm -hmm. And some, some people are doing great work on mm -hmm. the community side. We have found, you know, a niche to try to help mm -hmm. with, with, with the officers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're receptive. You know, mm -hmm. when it, there is, it's, it's another place where you wouldn't necessarily expect mm -hmm. the, the, right. the, the heat, the most mm -hmm. roughest, toughest guys mm -hmm. to do this. I could give you one more example. If you're curious mm -hmm. about uh, where this is happening in this, mm -hmm. in the ski lift maintenance industry, which mm -hmm. is to say the guys, mostly guys out mm -hmm. there fixing ski lifts mm -hmm. and, and operating chair lifts, mm -hmm. equipment, heavy equipment in the mm -hmm. freezing snow. Mm-hmm. Are you in Colorado? Is that where you're? Colorado? I'm from oh, you're Colorado. Atlanta. I grew up oh, outside Colorado. of Steamboat. Right, so, so, yep, you're right, speaking a lot of my Colorado language. Mm -hmm. they, these, these are bearded guys with their mm -hmm. baseball caps and sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And this will be the second year that I, I co lead a workshop called F the Tough Guy Show. You know, so <laughs> I, love I can't that. say the whole word there, but mm -hmm. this is a, a, a line that mm -hmm. a leader of a ski resort in, in the California area, mm -hmm. actually in Nevada, used when I was doing a workshop leading a workshop on leadership. We were mm -hmm. talking about the importance of psychological safety. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that two people on his team had committed suicide oh. in the past year. Mm -hmm. And he said they, nobody knew mm -hmm. that they were distressed and mm -hmm. they were troubled. And he chalks it up in part to this culture, a, a hyper-masculine mm -hmm. culture where we can't share how mm -hmm. we're feeling and get help. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're trying last year, we had mm -hmm. like 80 or 90 guys and people, and mostly guys that wow. came to the workshop mm -hmm. and we're going to do another one. Mm -hmm. This part two because there is a recognition mm -hmm. that we are hurting as guys right. mm -hmm. and we need to, we need to update mm -hmm. our, our ideas of what it means mm -hmm. to be a man. Right. You know, and at the same point, we need to update, you know, and, and I'm saying me as in, you know, the, the female here, uh -huh. we need to update what we're expecting from men, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's in the, in the workplace, you know, all of these various at home. I mean, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. some, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day and she said, oh my God, my husband cooks every meal. My husband does all the laundry. I think this is the greatest thing in the world. Um, yeah. But, you know, when, when, when everybody else changes our expectations, then it, it then everybody is allowed to mm -hmm. change their expectations. Yeah. You know, 
Oh my gosh, Ed, we, if we, we, we have to have you back because I think this oh, is just such an important topic. Um, but, you know, tell us a little bit more about specifically what you do and, and how you help people. Sure. Uh, well, I am an author. I'm writing. Um, I am a consultant working with organizations on, mm-hmm. on these, uh, on these topics, uh, I'm also a speaker, so I'm mm-hmm. giving talks on uh, on these topics around masculinity and workplace culture. Mm-hmm. Happy to to share these ideas, mm-hmm. um, keynote conference needs, or, mm-hmm. or other kind of interest in another topic that we haven't talked about, but that I've explored with a partner named Jennifer Conweiler is quiet men, the intersection mm-hmm. of introversion mm-hmm. and masculinity. Mm-hmm. Where we we say now is the time for quiet men, and mm-hmm. we have a, a lot of research on that. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the things that I'm doing, and happy to 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 connect with folks. Mm-hmm. So how would people find you? The best way is probably a LinkedIn, searching okay. me up on LinkedIn and connecting mm-hmm. that way. Um, also, I have uh, my website is edfraunheim.com. Mm-hmm. So either either those places, please connect with me and, mm-hmm. and I'd love to, to talk further. Perfect. I love it. You know, this really has been such a fascinating discussion because... I, you know, I, I am from that, you know, that, that period, I'm, I'm <clears throat> a baby boomer, um, mm-hmm. you know, just barely, just, you know, um, but you know, we did have different expectations of male and female, um, you know, and, and, and you know, and, and seeing how things have evolved, has been just fascinating to me. And, and, mm-hmm. but more importantly, seeing how they've evolved for the better, um, mm-hmm. because I think we do see, you know, when, when you've got these open, trusting, empowering workplaces, families, whatever, everybody benefits. I totally agree. I, I, I'm, that's my next book, Deb, is, is writing about sort of the um, evolution of, of, mm-hmm. of my own life, but also mm-hmm. the wider story, that, the, the more positive story mm-hmm. around men in, in America, especially. So I, I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of that too. And I, I'm really mm-hmm. glad to hear some of your stories. Mm-hmm. I, I got to put, I've got Evan in my, in my notes here for, yep, yep. I'll send you further. the links um, because yes, he, yeah, just do. delightful young man. Um, but, but yeah, you know, but yeah, we see that it, it's, it's interesting how we think of those, you know, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have thought of them as being a good player. Now that's what we look for. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah. Well, Ed, this has been, you know, like I said, just absolutely fascinating and, and having such a good you know, discussion with you. I, I can't wait to do it again. Do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? Thanks for that invitation. I would say that I think there's a lot of men out there that feel stuck, mm-hmm. that feel confined. We use actually that term, uh, confined masculinity that kind of limits our opp- opportunities in life. And I want to just say there is a bigger way, uh, what we call liberating masculinity that really frees men. It can free you if you're a guy to live a fuller life, a more satisfying life, a more soulful life. And as you get free, it frees the people around you to also have a fuller, more satisfying, more soulful life. So take, take, take some steps in that direction. And I, I don't think you'll regret it. I love it. Well, this has been so much fun. I've been speaking with Ed Fraunheim, the author of Reinventing Masculinity, The Liberating Power of Compassion and Connection. And we didn't even talk about the other three C's that you have in your book because you have five. Next time. Um, sure. Yes. Next time. Next time. And, and until then, I'm Deb Creer and everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.